I just sway and I let gravity do it because I am not about to rip off the skin of my new dick. Good morning, guys. Morning. Welcome to a very weird episode today where we're going to talk about my experience um, with my with getting circumcised at 18 years old. Ah! And we are going to have breakfast. Yes, we're going to have breakfast somewhere I think very romantic in Pongo. Um, and we're going to talk about this circumcision, why I did it, what's the aftercare, the infection I got and how Pat took care of me. Uh, because someone just recently DM'd me about this. Um, which leads me to believe that there are still a lot of people watching Real Talk, so thanks for watching that guys. <laughs> so what I had or was born with, right, I think, uh, was this issue called phimosis, which means that you have a type 4 skin around your PP, which means that at erect stage, right, your foreskin cannot pull past the bulb of the penis. And so I sat on that piece of information for way too long until I read an article on Reader's Digest, right, that suggests that I have testicular cancer. Huh? Basically, I have a ball sack that is bigger than the other. Right? Like one nut is bigger than the other nut. So, ah, born with a lot of problems, right? So then I went to a polyclinic. And so I dropped my pants, he squeezed my nuts, then he said, ah, mine also like that, no problem, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so apparently it's normal that one sex lower than the other. Lah. So sagging lower than the other versus one big, one small is different, yeah. Um, okay, so that's that. And then I was like, okay, that's a relief. So then can I go and get circumcised? Because I've been thinking about it for way too long. And since I have my pants down, right, then let's just let's just analyze this matter together. Lah, huh? And so the doctor set me an appointment at Singapore General Hospital. You know, oh, oh, oh. Oh wait, hold up. Ah, don't touch, don't What's that? Wow. This Hong Kong Xiao, hey. <laughs> hey God, these are number tattoo number what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh wow, do y'all know that pet is such an Hong Kong Xiao? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a, a portrait of my dog, of our dog, ah, and our bird. So our this dog. is Bella, and uh, this is Niao Niao. Niao Niao. And this, all this is in the love then, of. Channel John, logo. Jump pack cross. That's crazy. So I'm also considering, right, doing the jump pack cross on my arm, and that will be my tattoo number one. And I'm a bit apprehensive for him to do it as tattoo number one because I don't know, man. Like, is it a bad idea? Hey, can you let me know whether it's a bad idea to put jump pack cross? I'm thinking here, like here. Wait, okay, wait, point for me. Point for me. Here. here. For the amount of shit that I give to Sengkang. <laughs> This park is in Sengkang. What's this place called? Ah? Sengkang Riverside Park. But we really come here for the vibes. You see, there's a park here. And then it's in this pavilion. I tell you, you come here during sunset. Ah. They got fairy lights and stuff. Eh. Wow, super vibes. Can you all see my view? Can you see my view? It's very cooling. Yeah. It is, ah, it's a bit overexposed and I a bit don't want to adjust. But there's a, there's a pond there. <laughs> And so on the day of the surgery, right? I remember we were on the waiting room and this is completely sidebar and completely unimportant information, right? But I was just thinking about how does how does the doctor know how much foreskin to cut? Because if it's too tight, right? Because I'll be sleeping ma, which means my my dick would be limp ma. So how do they know how much foreskin to cut and stitch? Wouldn't it like if he if he overdo it then if when my dick erect wouldn't he have tear out the stitches, right? So I was just discussing with my father, then my father said there's a nurse inside that will lick the bottle of your thing. <laughs> I tell you about the liquor. I know, I know. <laughs> so we get, so there's, then when the, there's an auntie nurse that come out with a wheelchair, then my father said, ah, that's the liquor. <laughs> <laughs> the surgery itself was completely painless. I remember that when I woke up at the hospital, right, and they asked me, uh, so how was it? Uh, rate, your, rate your pain from 1 to 10 so that we can properly prescribe uh, painkillers. I gave them a 6, but actually I felt 0. I just thought, I don't want them to give me some Panadol shit. I want some real stuff in case I pass away, right? Nice. Nasi lemak. Here's a nasi lemak. But the egg is a bit weird, eh? What happened to my egg? They try and put it back in the chicken. <laughs> that looks nice. Yeah, it looks great. It's a... Uh, it is indeed crispy. So while we eat, I'm gonna share about the shape of my dick when I came out of surgery. It's like that, right? Like that, right? Like this is the bulb, right? Over here, I got one donut, like a ring. Ah. The extents are thicker than the head. And then got stitch marks on it. Wow, eh, guys, when I saw I thought, oh my god, this is my life now. I panicked. Yeah. I also panicked. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether is it going to recover. I was not and confident it was going to heal to look like a normal ass dick, to be honest, at that time. And at the age of 18 or 19, I had to be a nurse for him. Eh. He's like at home, cannot go out, wearing the sarong. And there's one time, 
he was bathing and then suddenly he called for me of course I have to run there lah mm. and then he said babe I need to ask you to do something that is gonna be very difficult and I hope you can help me so I'm like okay what then he said I need you to take out one stitch that is sticking to my dick and I'm like huh you want to trust me with that so he said you're gonna take a tweezer and you need to be very 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 careful so imagine me right squatting down and his dick is on my eye level <laughs> and then he said like okay now you you there's one stitch there that is poking me can you see it they're like yeah and then i have to take the tweezer and just cow it and out it basically and it, it was a, it was those stitches that's supposed to dissolve on its own but some part dissolves some part hardened then the hardened part right is poking me which makes me wonder if i don't have a girlfriend house at the time like your mother no ah, i think i go back to hospital <laughs> During the recovery process, honestly, I felt more or less okay, right? There were things that I learned, like how to change dressing. Uh. First, I never even got to see the wound, uh, but the when they wrapped up, right? When I remember when I first looked at it, right? The, this is my dick, right? And then it's wrapped up, right? It was a nice white gauze. Only when I go home, right? Then I lift up my dick, right? Then I realized the bottom uh, is all blood. It's all but dried up, like, you know? And so I realized, okay, the bulk of the wound is all at the bottom. And so, um, when you change dressing that time, right, everything is at the bottom and you can't see, ma, because it's at the bottom of your penis, right? I will just stand in the shower, I strip ready, then I will just wet the gauze and the gauze will collect the water, then I just sway. I just sway and I let gravity do it because I am not about to rip off the skin of my new thing. <laughs> so now here's the crux of the story, which is that I got an infection. Yeah. So two weeks later, right? The doc so the doctor when before they discharged me from surgery, he said if you have fever, you must come back because it, it means infection already. One and a half, two weeks in, right? I got a fever. And I refused to go back, okay, I tell you. I put ice la everything. I remember back then we had a bathtub, right? I was I ice bath myself uh, to try and lie to myself and my body that I don't have a fever. <laughs> I don't know why our hindsight is so stupid, right? I went to the hospital, so the doctor took a look at it, shifted my dick around violently, and decided that there's a lot of pus inside, I need to cut. I tell you guys, at the time uh, I really sweat, eh. before he even start, right, I sweat until my fever gone right here. So the doctor say, you rest a while, I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna unpick the stitches, and squeeze out the pus. As I lay there, right, and he violently handles my penis, right, I could feel three jabs, or two jabs, to the base of my penis. Okay, this is the painkiller. The painkiller itself is pain, okay? And then I could feel, as he, as he brought a little thing to snip snip, right? He snipped out the stitches all around my penis. It's damn pain, okay? Either the painkillers don't work, or if no painkillers, I will not be here today. And after he's done with that, right? He takes a scalpel. Hey, I'm just awake there lying there. Ah and he cuts the bottom of my penis and then he violently squeezed out the pus from my dick. At that point of time, I was really sweating like crazy, I was tearing like crazy. It was the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my life and I think that level of pain got me through some tough things in life, you know? That if I could survive that, I could survive anything. When he's done, I say, okay, ready? Ah? He say, yeah, I got out most of the pus already. He say, you rest a while, I need to come back and stitch, stitch you up again. At that point of time, I was like, huh, still need to stitch up. And then he violently picked up my dick, right? And showed me that at the bottom of my penis, right, there was a cavity, like a, like a three, four, five mm cavity, ah, uh, under the bulb of my penis. So he said, if you don't stitch up, you're gonna have this cavity, you know. So back then, my family is with me already, ma. So I look at my loving girlfriend and I say, if, if the bottom of my dick got hole, you okay or not? I don't think I can deal with the stitches. <laughs> That is the first time in my life I feel like I have I really wanted to, to take the easy way out on something so important, you know? And so it was a long 10, 15, 20 minute wait and an attending came in. He also violently looked at my penis and said, okay, you can go home already. Then I said, oh, no need to stitch. And then he's like, no, if you stitch, the pus will just build again and have no place to drain. So you just have to you just have to let it air dry and, and give a place for the past to continue training. Wallahi! Eh? At that point, I seem like my father at that. Like, my, the professional medical opinion is I don't need to stitch this shit up anymore. 
damn happy. Ask them for the tissue box that they lend me because their tissue box is this triangle shape one. Uh, it's just nice, it's a very nice tent uh, that you can put at your belly. Uh. So when you put the cloth, right, the cloth doesn't touch your dick, so the dick very, very tender. And then from then I went home and the rest of the recovery process was smooth. And in a matter of two, three weeks, right, my my Wolverine of the penis regenerated the meat, right? Such that the bottom got no cavity. Wow. Fantastic penis. Round of applause for my penis. So now I'm gonna recount my memory of how the whole thing went down. So when he first told me that he's going to go for this procedure, I'm thinking, why? Not like I have seen many many dicks lah, but you know like last time I bathed my brother, then I have a few ex-boyfriends and the, all the dicks look the same to me. Like they all look like the normal kind and I didn't know there was a different kind. So when he told me he was going to do this procedure, I'm like okay then how will it look like? So he just say like oh just without the skin lah. So I'm like okay if it really hurts you and um, I don't know how it feels right, then obviously you have to go for it lah. So uh, when he went for the surgery and when he came back, there were a lot of rules set. So uh, I still stay over during the weekends and because I'm a Nian Kao, I cannot live without this man. <laughs> so we when we sleep, he actually ordered to put a poster in between us. Order uh, guys. Order. Not request, eh? He's like, babe, this is very, very important to me. It's like, it's going to hurt me if you accidentally hit me or whatever not. Yeah. So when we put the bolster, there were also a few more rules that followed. First thing is, I cannot seduce him. Because back then we were young, um, young rabbits, yeah? Yeah. So <laughs> a bit, a bit, uh, consider seducing him. <laughs> Don't even bend down and show me a bit of cleavage. Eh. Like, I cannot. Eh. Yeah. You know because I mean? you imagine the whole thing is all stitched up and bandaged. Uh, and when, if I erect, uh, it forces, it, it creates pressure on the wound mm. to stretch the stitches. So he's like, I can never have an erection with this going on. So I say, okay, can. We went along with all that. And I think the recovery time, I was in school, because he don't need to go to school. But when I meet him, I always feel very painful for him because he really got a few times was in tears one. But back then, we didn't know there was an infection. We didn't know anything. Yeah. So when he had to go back to the, the clinic or the hospital to get it checked, right? I could sense his fear. He was so worried that he had to go through more pain. And I was very empathetic towards it. So, after his procedure, then I realized there is two kinds of dicks in this world. One that is uncircumcised, uh, uncircumcised and one is circumcised. And it really looked a lot different. Like, it's very different looking. One is like, imagine you put a tau pop over a sausage. <laughs> okay? You put the sausage inside the tau pop. The other one is just that the bottom is the tau pop, very, very thin skin. And then the top is the sausage. So I like when I look at his new dick, right? I'm like, oh, wow, this looks a lot cleaner. And like when guys pee, it makes sense yeah. la, that you don't need to clean so much. Okay, right? I tell you what, it looks like a dildo. It looks like a classic yes. dildo. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So um, I think the after recovery, right? The next most important thing that we have to discuss is um, sex. Where, how are we gonna do it? Because in his head, right, it's like a wow, it's gonna tear if I if I just put in a bit more vigor. Yeah, or, or that if lubrication is insufficient. In the past, what happens was that my penis would, the, the skin, right, would pop, right, because I was uncircumcised and super painful. And now, if it's un insufficiently lubricated, maybe the stitches tear. So I was very worried. So I think we, we did it very slowly the first time, and I was just very conscious of not tearing his dick. Yeah. I remember I think our first two times it was just try. I think the first time we never we never got to it. We almost almost there we ah ah it cannot. No we ah ah you ah ah then ah, cannot. Then the second time I think we did but we just nobody not come. Full force, ah, no, no nobody come. We just did like five five ten minutes ah okay lah go on over lah. Mm. <laughs> then we just jump. I don't think there was a time where I was like wow well, shit maybe the this dick is gonna spoil and I, I'm not gonna have sex anymore. Because I think back then my sex drive is still not very high. Like when we were younger, it's like a really? high but then not important. I felt that the love was stronger than knowing now, that. So what? Now no, now your sex drive is more important than love. So we have always put uh, love above sex. Hey we take a break from the story. 
for me to tell you about what it feels like to be circumcised. I want to say the first maybe one, two months uh, is very, very raw. Like, because especially with me that have phimosis, right, which means that basically the entirety of my penis, right, has always been hidden or shrouded behind the foreskin. And so, um, for the first like couple of months, wearing underwear or what was like super sensitive. And like even like touching, wow, super sensitive. Many people say that after circumcision, your penis might lose some form of uh, sensation, lose a few percent of sensation, which is, I guess, it makes sense and probably true because you cut out some nerves in the process. But for someone that dealing with phimosis like me and many of the people that have DM'd me, right? Uh, I, I rather lose 5 10 percent of sensation, right? Than have sex that time, right? Then suddenly be in excruciating pain for two, three seconds and embarrass yourself. So I get it, okay, but this is not medical advice. Ah. Just wanted to share this because to be very honest, there's a lot of young men that DM me and and I at first I'm like, and why you tell me? Then I realized I also had no one to tell. Because I asked my dad and I could only ask vaguely, I was not gonna tell my friends that I have a penis problem. And so I wanna thank the people that do DM me. Um, I'm very honored to be that guy. And I will protect your secrets, okay? I also remembered, right, <clears throat> during the recovery period, because once again, Pei and I got together not long. She did me a few months, I go and get, I go and get circumcised. <laughs> so we were still in our rapid phases, right? And I felt very helpless. I couldn't satisfy my girlfriend. <laughs> Yucks. You know the feeling of people saying like, let's say if you, if you have to remove your testicle or whatnot, you don't feel like a complete man. And I felt it during that period because the, the penis completely cannot use for anything else other than taking a piss. By the way, if you're wondering, does it hurt when you pee? It does not. There's no, no blood that comes out when you pee one also. Uh, the, the doctors will make sure of that before they discharge you. Um, and, and so there was a lot of like one-sided foreplay and stuff like that so that um, I can feel more like a man that have done my responsibility and I don't know whether Pat felt weird about it uh, she doesn't really remember it so it was not that memorable <laughs> <laughs> it was that bad right to the point where the first thing we did right was attempt to have sex because I feel like if you attempt to put your hand on it right if your grip a bit strong uh, you're gonna rip everything but I was following a lot of his instructions lah which I have no idea what's going on lah I was trying also lah Mm. Hey, yeah. but I want to go back to one point. Uh. So, a lot of times people ask us, when do you know he or she is the one? And John's one is always all love my first side or whatever, not right? And I always say I don't have an epiphany. But now that I think about it, uh, when he first told me that, babe, I might have testicular cancer, I remembered that my reaction was not that, oh shit, you know, did I, did, am I going uh, like with the wrong guy? There was no fear of that, but it was more of like, Okay, I will be with you and we will write this whole thing out. And I never thought of like, if his dick don't work anymore or like if he falls sick, will I just leave him? So I think Aww. it was at that moment I realised that, you know, like, I, I wanted to be with you throughout the entire journey, whatever you may have. Which I think goes to show, um, what could then be, like, let's say our secret to a longer relationship was that we were never dating to figure things out. We were dating because we like each other and we are just waiting to get married. We have oh. committed very early, right? Because that was, that was the mindset. Yeah, but we have never verbalized this before. Yeah. Now that I think about it, it did not cross my mind. <laughs> it did not cross my mind that I really scared her. Because, oh well, I date this guy for a few months, then now he <laughs> tell me maybe you got cancer, eh? That's crazy. Eh? <laughs> well, this vlog really a bit much. At this point, I might as well show you all my balls, eh? <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, if you have any questions, right, um, regarding this procedure, obviously none of this can be medical advice, huh? uh, But if you have any questions on the experience, do let me know. Because many years later, my father admitted to me that he also has phimosis. And then he went to get circumcised and he was asking me for tips. Huh? He did? Yes. Uh, basically, if I can give you some tip, right, would be to prepare a sarong. Uh, that is one, so that you don't have to wear underwear, don't have to wear pants. And this other one, which is a slight privilege, just keep the aircon on at home, if you can lah. If you all can afford it and you have aircon, keep the aircon on so that you don't perspire at all. Keep the surgery area completely dry. Mm. Yeah, and the, the wound is very nice and clean. Um, it's laser cut on these days. And so, like for example, my dad, which has all my best practices, he went for his uh, circumcision in his 50s, uh, I think. 
without a hitch. Mm. Basically, the surgery didn't hurt, you come out, then it's a bit tender, you will take painkillers, and then after that, you just feel like there's increased sensitivity, then that's it, you're done. Um, yeah, however, having said that, um, some people feel like circumcision where not necessary is a cruelty and it carries its own risk as well. Like, so talk to a doctor. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do. Um, our vlog, our travel vlog on Cappadocia and Istanbul is coming out um, in the next episode, I think. We need a bit more time to edit because there's a lot of footage. Um, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank